Greetings all, the Devious Monkey here. I am one happy monkey today. Everything came in, even though some shit wasn't supposed to come in until next week. If you've followed along on the saga of my ever-changing studio, I'm here to tell you that in its current iteration, it's pretty much done. I spent a lot of time today on those little devilish details, and I now have everything running on this studio on actual plug-in power. No batteries. Everything has a plug, which is great because I freaking hate having to charge batteries and having power run out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you all three cameras because I'm running on three cameras right now just so that I can show you how I could possibly have all this set up. And I'm going to have to turn on the overhead light so that you can see what's going on. So right now I've got the A6600 and the Cinerig, as always. Everything is connected up. I've got the light now where I want it to be. I have it all cinched down so that it doesn't wobble as much. I have my overhead camera, which you can see my hands here in the screen, which is the ZV-1, which is hanging now on that monitor arm. And I have power cables run through it, and I have an HDMI cable running through it down to a monitor, which is right in front of me. And then I also have my trusty run and gun, A6600, and that's what I'm gonna show you this whole setup on. So, without further ado, let me run over here, turn on the overhead light, so all the lighting's gonna go to shit, but you gotta be able to see what I'm talking about. Okay, so here's the setup from over on the other side of the room, and I do have the 30 millimeter 1.4 on here, so it's, you know, it's gonna be kinda close up. But what I did was I have, you know, the center rig going on here, and I have the light stand, which is that horrible wobbly arm that comes out that goes up, boom. And now I have the light sitting on there. I also have a power cord running into it that goes down to what I have now done is put a power strip down here and I have all the stuff going into there. So the center rig, all that stuff is plugged into that, you know, the Indie Pro stuff, which then goes down and plugs into this power strip. I have the LED light going into the power strip, and I also have the A66, or not the A6600, the ZV-1. I have power run from that going down to this power strip. So as you can see, it goes down and around, comes up the pole here, and now we run over the ZV-1. And let me ring it around here so that you can see that I've got it on that ball head which showed up today. All right. Awesome. Now, as you can see, I have another cable kind of running down to this Field World 5-inch monitor that's just been sitting in a drawer. And now that's going to show you It's kind of hard to see it, but it's going to show you, you know, that you can see what's going on from the ZV-1 up above. All right. So if I'm sitting here, this is what I see. And everything is tucked neatly. There's only a couple of cables that I will sort of, now that I've got this all set up, I'll move them so that they're not sort of sticking out there, but they're still underneath the tripod leg. So it's not like I'm gonna step on them anyways. And then just this little bit right here where the, where the main power strip plugs into, and that's how that goes. Now, if I want to show you overhead stuff, and now here I am in front of everything, I'm gonna go shut that light off and now the way that I have all this stuff set up, you can see directly from overhead with the light that's going on. Okay, back on the A6600 here. So here's what you see with the ZV-1. And I can, I can zoom that in or zoom that out. You know, I just have to play around with it. But for now, I think this is at the right height. It's above everything. And you can't see it. You can't see the cables anywhere. I'm gonna have to work on the lighting though, because I mean, you can see shadow here. It just sort of depends on what you're doing. But if I mean, if I'm showing you stuff and you see some shadows, I mean, boo hoo. If, if that's the worst I have to deal with, then that's 
you know, that's the way it goes. Now I'm gonna put the A6600 up here on the other tripod. And now you can see it when it's in its three cam or, you know, B cam setup. And one of the things I'm gonna talk about are these things. These plugs here are the greatest thing that I've ever spent money on. It's just basically an extension. And you use this so that you can plug in those big, you know, like the, the I don't even know what you call them, like the power plug bricky things that if you plug them into any kind of an outlet, it takes up every other outlet. So if I plugged those two into the power strip that I have hanging here now that, that everything's run into, I basically would have only been able to plug those two things into it and it would have taken up the rest of the plugs because they go down over and basically one plug takes up three. So obviously that's not a good thing and that's what these things are for. I mean, these things are amazing and I bought, geez, what, a, I think a 10 pack of them and they were so amazing that I ended up buying another 10 pack and I have them, you know, over on my battery charging station. I have them pretty much on everything here that's plugged in that isn't a normal plug. And sometimes it just gives you that little bit of extra reach so that you can then make things fit. Now, the one thing that I haven't gotten yet, and that's because I ordered the wrong damn thing, was the uh, 10 foot USB-C cable so that I can plug my aperture light down in here and not have the cable like drooping across these shelves, which you can't see, but it's there and it drives me crazy. So that's sort of like the last little bit that needs to be done, but it isn't anything that's that pressing. At this point now, I now have a very small, stable, well-powered, well-lit little studio here in my office. I'm in this little corner now. I don't have shit to trip over and hit my head on and all that kind of stuff. Well, I mean, I do, but you get my point. I'm not gonna be bashing my head on a 36 inch softbox. I'm not gonna be tripping on a light stand. I'm not gonna be tripping over cords going everywhere. Everything is contained in this little corner right now. And as you can see, I've got the lighting down. I got my little fairy lights going on here. The clock's in, I'm in, it's all good. Here, I've got my overhead so that you can see all the little dastardly things that I wanna do if I wanna show you something from overhead. That's all powered. And I've got a spot for my B cam that, you know, at this point, because I gotta use the 30 millimeter, I mean, it's just gonna be melon, monkey melon the whole time. But other than that, I mean, it's good to go. Everything is sturdy, everything is stable, everything is powered. It's all plugged into one single power strip, more or less, and everything is grand. The other thing that I did change, uh, right now I'm using this just so that I had steady sound coming from that cam and because I was walking around and I wasn't in front of it. But at this point now, I have a Movo VXR10 mounted, plugged into the Cinerig so that I don't have to constantly use this and charge it all the time. It is the one downfall when you have wireless stuff that it needs to be charged. So now when I'm in studio, in theory, I mean, right now I could be using this Rode Wireless Go, but in theory, I will not need to have any batteries for any of this stuff. It's all plugged in. If for some reason I lose power, all of it can be run with batteries because I have it all hooked up to that Cine rig with the Indie Pro stuff on it. So it's gonna run off of one gigantic gold mount battery and everything will be peachy. I don't have to worry about any of that. Now, if I do run out of power, I mean, the chances of me sitting here filming video are pretty slim, you know, but if I wanted to, I mean, I wouldn't be doing overhead stuff, so I wouldn't be worried about that. But the bottom line is, is that I've got this set up so that I can do anything I wanna do in this studio with any of these three cameras, and it's all run off of, of a single power source, and everything works, finally. <sighs> Talk about forward and up. If, if you go through and you look at all the crazy setups that I've had, where I've had shit all over this place and stuff hanging here and laying there and all that kind of crap, it was so stressful and it has taken me, what, I've been doing this, now that I've been doing it again, for like a couple years now. I mean, two years of multiple camera systems, of multiple lighting systems, it's taken me that long to get to this point now where I can actually say I'm pretty happy the way things are. 
I just don't feel I need to change it. That being said, I did have somebody tell me that my Cinerig kind of defeats the purpose of what they think the A6600 is for, and that's being a small little camera that you can take. But what I've showed you is that it's that versatile of a camera because I can build it into this big ass Cinerig system if I want to. I also showed you the run and gun system on the second A6600 and I've showed you like down right to bare bones where you could put this A6600 with the kit lens, the 16 to 50 kit lens and it's tiny. It's not pocketable. I mean, it's not like the ZV-1, but it, it's that versatile. I mean, you can pretty much do anything with this A6600. And that's what I'm doing. I mean, I have two completely different setups for it, even right now, and I can just pop that thing off of the tripod and I'm, I'm good to go, even keeping that lens on it, running out and doing street photography or whatever kind of photography or video. So it is a very versatile camera. It's why it's my favorite camera. It's why I have two of them. And I wouldn't be even opposed to getting a third one, you know, if I had decided to get rid of the ZV-1 and not use it as the overhead. But as it stands, it does work rather well as an overhead cam. That being said, I believe that the Devious Monkey Studio is now set and is done, with the exception of the USB-C cable, but it's done and it's good to go. And I can now shoot anything that I want to shoot that I would have shot for this channel but now I've got it all down and I don't even have to think about it. It's good to go there. And I mean, unless something breaks, there's no reason for me to replace a single piece of gear in, in this entire setup. And I am thrilled to death. Thanks for joining me on the journey. And I know that I have put you guys through the ringer and I have bought stuff and showed you and changed my mind and built shit and ripped it apart and this, that, and the other thing. But I'm finally at a point where this is done. There's no, there's really nothing else I can do that I can add or change that I think would make it any better or any different that it would need to be, with the exception of possibly this light having a soft box. But there isn't a soft box for it, and right now, I think it looks pretty good. I think it looks good there. I think the lighting here looks good too. So, everything seems to be good to go. I'm pretty happy with it, and the studio's done. And that's it. So now I just have to freaking think up content to bring you guys, other than me changing my studio every other day. Sometimes every day. Sometimes in the day. That's it. That's all I got for you today. I appreciate you coming along and checking things out. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you think. As always, thanks for joining me. Like, subscribe, and all that shit. And remember, kids, forward and up.